This is a straight to the point unlock guide for both the secret weapon blueprint and the cloud watching mastery camo from the Purgatory Island limited time event. The event is running until around the 17th of October, but by following this guide, you'll be able to get my top tips and avoid the mistakes I made when completing this as a solo. Although if you've got more friends than me and are dropping in with teammates, this is still just as useful, so keep watching. Before I shortly take you through each of the eight challenges, and the secret challenge of course, let's really quickly cover the absolute basics of the game mode. First, you need to select the Purgatory Island playlist. I had squad fill off so I could just concentrate on what I needed to do, but if you drop in with teammates or randoms, it may make a couple of these challenges a bit easier, but it's by no means essential. You'll be dropping in on Hellspawn Island, a horror-themed version of Rebirth Island tied into the annual Halloween event that's more disgusting than the average teenager's bedroom. It's worth noting that you'll spawn in with your custom loadouts and infinite respawns for the duration of the game, which can go on for up to two hours before the timer runs out. And you don't want to be there when that happens. But my point is that you don't need to worry about the time, and while there is the odd marauding band of Giga Sweats trying to take all the fun out of this fun mode, if you die, it's not a drama because you respawn in straight back in. You can complete the eight challenges in any order, but I'll go through them as they appear on the event page. Challenge one, reach Torment level two. What the heck is Torment? Other than the monumental struggle of getting a win in Warzone solos, obviously. Well, it's a bit like the old wanted rating in Grand Theft Auto, if you ever played that. As you went around causing chaos, your rating would go up and police would come after you. But in Purgatory Island, you instead get kills on human players or the AI mercenaries to increase your Torment rating. And mercenaries come in the form of either eerie mutants that spawn from holes in the ground or military contractor style bots that get dropped in via helicopters. I would actually recommend not worrying about this challenge too much as you'll almost certainly have completed it without trying by the time you get to the end of all the others. So a bit of a freebie this one. Challenge 2. Spend 5 minutes outside the safe zone without killing another operator. The safe zones are these two huge spheres at either end of the map. Players cannot be hurt in the safe zones. It's kind of like a timeout from all the carnage going on everywhere else on the map. But for this challenge, you're essentially playing a game of hide and seek for five minutes outside of these safe zones. There are probably loads of quiet corners where players won't be passing through, but I found this tunnel over at the north end of the map underneath Factory to be completely dead. The challenge says no operator kills, so I suspect in a pinch you can kill the bots and still complete the challenge, but I would try and find somewhere you're just not attracting any attention to yourself at all. Definitely one of the easier challenges. I actually went and made a cup of tea. Challenge three, get 50 mercenary kills using the Terror Ball all while in a vehicle. I'll be explaining what a Terror Ball is in a later challenge, but trust me, you don't wanna know. You'll want to complete this challenge by getting kills in a vehicle. So you can get in any helicopter, boat or car as long as you're occupying one of the seats rather than just stood on top of it. One popular technique for squads is going in a chopper and then the passengers can just gun the mercs as you hover around the map. I actually did this as a solo, switching seats between stops. It just took a bit more effort. The easiest method, if you can get hold of one, is to get one of the cars and just drive around in a loop around the map, running over any mercs as you go. I didn't go for this because it was like Nick Cage in Gone in 60 Seconds with these vehicles in such high demand. Obviously, every man and his dog was wanting to complete these challenges. 50 kills sounds like a lot, but this wasn't actually that bad. The mercs die easily, especially if you go for headshots. Now for a really easy one. Challenge four, commend five operators while in the safe zone. So until now, you've been staying out of the safe zone, but it's now time to head into one. Once there, locate any other human operator and just stand close to them. Just like in the old COD HQ from World War II, you'll be able to interact with other players by commending them. The commendations on your HUD counter, showing the number of commendations received, has no obvious purpose, but I think that's just this game mode all over. It's a random mishmash of stuff that is purely for fun. Dish out five commendations and move on to... Challenge five. Get five operator kills while in a vehicle. Well, this is undoubtedly trickier than killing mercs, but it's only five kills and you shouldn't have too much bother. You can either try to mow some down while you're run raiding the mercs in challenge three, or take to the skies in a helicopter. Either squish people camping tower or living quarters roof. Or probably the easiest way is just aim for the never ending stream of players redeploying. You can blend them with your rotor blades. I managed at least one opportunistic kill by shooting a player from the passenger seat of a car, so be on the lookout for those situations while you're doing the other challenges as well. And so onto what is likely to prove to be the trickiest of all the challenges to complete. Challenge 6. Get three operator kills using a terror ball. 
What on earth is a terry ball you're asking? Well, it's a large red glowing beach ball type thing randomly dotted around the map. Except this is not fun times at the beach. They are very deathy. If they touch anyone faster than walking pace, it kills them. You included, so watch out. These things are very hard to control and you won't want to down yourself. That'd be embarrassing. You can push them about slowly, but I was opting for shooting them rather than risk getting killed by them. You have too many approaches to this one. The hard way is to honestly and frustratingly try and kill enemy players. You can either shoot them to down them and then snooker the ball at them once downed. This will count as a kill. Or if you somehow manage to actually down an enemy with a terror ball, as long as no one then shoots them after, oh, it will down. count as a terror ball kill once they eventually bleed out. You know if a kill has counted because you'll get the terrible icon appear in the kill feed. Oh, got one. The slightly less hard way, and I would never oh, normally recommend terrible. teaming, but we're going to put this down to this just being a bit of fun and you're not actually harming anyone by doing it, but you could find a player to team up with on the map. You'll find the match chat regularly filled with people asking where the ball is and seeking to help each other out with the challenge. I actually just randomly stumbled across the duo I teamed up with. It wasn't a response to the chat, but I instead recognised the international gaming sign for friendly. The bobbin crouching thing. Although if you do this on the face of a downed enemy, it means a very different thing, of course. Go ask your mum and dad. <laughs> Once you manage to partner up with someone, it's a quick task to complete this, to be honest. We had some randoms trying to interfere, but fending them off was actually quite fun. Yep, there's another mention of fun. It'll never catch on in Warzone. But from one fun item to another, vaulting through the skies in alien teleportation devices. Yes, challenge seven is to teleport 15 times using portals. And I did make a mistake with this one initially. It might be obvious to you when you go in the game, but there are these bonkers jump pad clown cannon type things that you can use to get around the map more quickly. These are not portals. The portals are indicated on the minimap with an icon that, to be honest, looks like a giant egg to me, but these are in fact portals. Although similar in appearance, these are not to be confused with the terribles. It's a nice easy challenge this one. Launch into the air from a portal, glide down to another portal, rinse and repeat this 15 times and you're done. Bosh. But wait, on the last leap you can drop straight into your last challenge of the event. If you thought I was talking a load of random junk before, buckle up. Challenge 8, pilot the flying shipment. Yes, it's exactly how it sounds. Look up into the sky and you will find a monstrous floating jellyfish. At least it looks like a jellyfish from afar, but get closer and you realise this is actually a flying replica of the multiplayer map shipment. I imagine the development process was a bit like... How can we go out with a bang and make this game even more bonkers? It's obvious. We can add the most chaotic map of all time, then put it in the sky and make it randomly spin around like a roller coaster. Top job. Make it so number one. This is fortunately one of the easier challenges to complete. While you will often find stacked black noir skins attempting to assert their dominance of the floating shipment by claiming it in the name of Homelander, you don't need to concern yourself with that. Have a floatable bit to line up your fast approach and then parachute straight into the open container up on the top. Inside you'll find a creepy skull orb that you need to interact with. You might get to have fun piloting the thing for a minute, you might get beamed as soon as you've touched it. But that doesn't matter because at this point you have just completed challenge 8 and unlocks the cloud watching camo. Bravo. And finally, the secret gore cannon blueprint challenge. So this isn't dead easy, it's one of those where you might need a little bit of luck on your side in terms of who the other players are in the lobby and how interested they are in ruining your game. So if we run it back to the torment meter and you had to get it to level 2, you surely will have done that by now. Well, now you have to ramp it up and take it to level 5. And not only do you have to get to level 5, but once there you have to survive for 5 minutes. So although the torment meter tops out at 5, you might as well be at level 25 by that point. There are a few key points here that will help you out massively. One is mercenary spawn locations. You get the mutants spawning in the yard outside a prison and in prison itself. Then the AI bots floating around the road alongside the west side of the map. My recommendation to you is to stick fighting the mutants and avoid human players, even while you're increasing your torment rating. As your rating increases, you'll get a mark on the map, like a most wanted contract, and if you start killing players, well, there's nothing pettier than a Warzone player in a resurgence game mode. The last thing you want is to be in the final minute of being level 5, 
and getting to level 5 takes a few minutes too, only to find someone seeking revenge to silently parachute on top of you for an execution with all the ninja skill of a... a ninja. So remain the grey man, unseen. As long as you're not attracting attention from Venezuela's 2019 national camping champion sat up on top of Water Tower, then you can quietly build your torment level before finding a quiet spot until things all blow over. While you can stay off the radar of human players, well, I mean, not literally, because we've already talked about how you'll be on the radar, but now also the mercs will start to come and hunt you down as your torment rating increases. However, with low health and aimers as questionable as your squad mate Steve, they're very manageable to defend against. Where it becomes a bit dicey is that at level 5, an attack chopper comes in after you. You might have seen these boss choppers in DMZ. Well, it's one of those. So feel free to choose wherever you like on the map, but I'd recommend either my previous hiding spot from Challenge 2 or the one I've used in my clips here. Both will mean you don't need to worry about the chopper. I felt the bottom of prison was a good choice because with all the different floors, it make hunting you down seem like too much effort to all the people taking part in the orgy of violence above you. So it can be a bit of a nervous wait, especially as a solo, but I think it was my second or third attempt to complete it and it actually went really smoothly in the end. I did have someone join me about 30 seconds after I'd completed the challenge for a bit of the old cheek clapping, but by that time I was done. I didn't care. I've got a video on the Jack Salvo aftermarket kit that I need to edit. I've got the brand new best all-round rifle in the game half leveled up, so I'll be getting onto that as a video, as well as other loadouts and weapon challenges during these last few weeks before we finally get our hands on Black Ops 6. If any of that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then please consider giving yourself the exclusive title as one of the first 500 subscribers to this channel. And maybe I can see you back here soon. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Bye for now. I'm out.